Hello everyone, I'm Elisa Margareta Ili and Piotr Bansky. We are presenting the standard information systems. Um, in the CIS, that we call CIS, we concentrate on the format recommendations for data depositions. And we will show what the CIS has to offer in this respect and why it is reasonable to also cover other research infrastructures. And we will also uh, briefly look at the RI modifications that we have already implemented in the CIS. Um, it is accessible at this um, URL, HTTPS standards, clarin.au slash CIS. For you who are interested in the history of CIS, please take a look at the paper by Piotr Bansky and Hannah Hedelin in the Clarin book. And also please check out our abstract for more details. Uh, the CIS stores information about data deposition form, data deposition format recommendations, and also information about many human language technology standards and other extra informations, and visualize that information in various ways. Uh, we define recommendations uh, with these four main formats, uh, main parts. Uh, from the top left, uh, in these curly brackets, there are the levels of recommendations. So a recommendation can be recommended, acceptable, or discouraged. The blue cylinders represent centers, the green one file formats, and the yellow one functional domains. For example, a center IDS would like to recommend um, file format TI spoken for functional domain audiovisual annotations, but it can also discourage plain text, for example, uh, for functional domains because it would rather not receive such a uh, format, uh, such data, data in that, such format. Mm. Next, in the CIS, uh, the recommendations are visualized in a table with four columns representing this, um, the parts, the main parts, um, and we can see here that one format can be recommended for multiple domains. Um, there are multiple centers that recommend, uh, for example, PDFF for image source language data, also for documentations and textual source language data. Um, on the most left, uh, right, uh, there is this E circle um, that will be explained later. The benefits of CIS for users who wish to deposit their data, it provides information on format centers, their recommendations that are clearly stated and comparable across centers because we have one skeleton um, that makes it comparable. Um, for Clarin, it enables KPI cal calculations um, as such. There are 21 Clarion B centers that are, have been recorded in the CIS, and 13 of the B centers uh, have provided recommendations to the CIS, and there are 62% of the centers that have provided re recommendations and also descriptions of the formats to the CIS. And we can obtain an uh, interesting glimpse of the trends of possible emerging standards. Um, in this screenshot, we show um, popular formats that are uh, formats that are popular for a specific domain. For example, a format WAVE, MP4, and FLAG are popular for audiovisual source language data because many centers recommend or accept these uh, formats. For centers, CIS also offers a way to satisfy certification requirements. And for other research infrastructure, uh, it will have the possibility to use um, tested solutions and derive more information and get better glimpse of trends, both global and local. So I will switch to the other. Thank you, Elisa. Uh, so once again, uh, you can have a look at uh, a basic instance of a single recommendation. And we uh, see those uh, three cylinders uh, from which data come. So at first, as you can see, uh, we kind of pair 
uh, functional domain with, with a file format. So we simply locate the format in a particular uh, uh, functional domain. It can be located in many, uh, that depends on the format. And then we link this pair to a particular center labeling the relationship with uh, the recommendation by the center. And now uh, uh, in a, we have color coded uh, the references. So I, I will be going through the particular uh, data sources and uh, note uh, how they can be extended or what kind of information is uh, lurking there actually. Uh, so first uh, there are the functional domains which allow to study, study data functions in and across uh, research infrastructures. So the questions um, are like, how do we differ from one another in terms of uh, research infra infrastructures? And uh, how much do our data domains overlap? Next, we have the format part. Uh, with uh, several uh, kinds of information and several ways to navigate across in the system. So we can go through keywords. Uh, there's something called format families uh, that we would like to show you, but there's no way to provide demonstration or during the talk. Uh, but it's a nice feature that we have there and are still working on, uh, providing a tree of uh, format relationships that you can navigate across. Uh, in a, in, in a particular format uh, information set, we also provide references to established format repositories and links to possible corresponding standards as well as uh, possible and recommended MIME types and file extensions. And uh, yeah, it's great that we have this huge screen because you can see something. So it's an example uh, page of, uh, of information about a, a single format. And going from top down, you can see uh, references to, to those uh, existing uh, repositories of information, such as Pronom, Library of Congress, Wikidata. Uh, and then uh, some more information about media types and file extensions, and also uh, a glimpse at the recommendations by uh, particular centers. Uh, finally, we have this blue cylinder uh, containing center information. Uh, well, uh, what we provide in this is, is a way to uh, look at the centers all together and, uh, and to subcategorize them in various ways. Uh, we also provide additional information. Uh, Elisa has mentioned those uh, little thingies in the in the format recommendations list, uh, they are actually pop-ups with additional comments on the particular format. So uh, a center may want to uh, kind of narrow down or expand on, on its uh, recommendation. It is also possible, let me scroll back. It is also possible to provide information about the particular center and it is possible to uh, language tag it. So, uh, English is the default across the board, but if we switch to text plus as the uh, research infrastructure, then German becomes the default language. Uh, and the next slide is simply supposed to show uh, uh, the kind of information we provide on centers. It is titled curation because, uh, well, we have a, I will mention uh, later on that we haven't had much uh, response from the particular centers. And uh, when uh, the recommendations are not curated by a particular center, uh, a warning shows up that you shouldn't trust this list fully yet. And in this case, because we have, uh, we have had a, a little event call, that we call Inputon at IDS, uh, I allowed uh, myself to put my name as the curator of the information for the time being. Uh, and that's why uh, you don't see a warning, but rather you, s you see a pointer to, to the relevant person uh, whom you may want to address with some questions and so on, um, or maybe bug reports, etc. cetera. Uh, you, you can also see which research infrastructures uh, the given center represents and how. Uh, 
and some of the, uh, I mean, all of the uh, recommendations by the center follow, but of course they don't fit into this slide. Uh, now the current state of information uh, in the CIS is as follows. Uh, for Clarin, we have all, we believe uh, that we have all centers that offer data deposition, including uh, the B centers. And we also offer ways to provide information in case we skip some relevant info that should be given. Because of course, uh, we rely on the dynamic uh, content of the Clarin database on centers. So of course, there is some lag uh, with how we uh, uh, make the information up to date. Uh, for text plus so far, uh, we mostly uh, represent centers that used to be, uh, or that st well, still are, uh, Clarin D centers in what used to be Clarin D, I wanted to say. Uh, for Daria, that's experimental for one, uh, for now we only have one center. Um, now, a natural question is uh, to ask is uh, what's required by a center to provide this kind of information? How much work would it entail? Uh, how sustainable uh, that is? And uh, our recommendation is, uh, well, best to do it once and then modify as needed, uh, ideally via GitHub uh, pull requests or simply issues if you don't want to bother with pull requests. Uh, and we provide uh, quite a lot of information on, uh, on the work, on the possible workflow. Uh, we've had our first event, as I mentioned, for inputting information and we can uh, advise on how to go about uh, organizing such events in a center. For us, it, it lasted maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half, I forget. Uh, so it's not much time invested and the result is pretty nice. Um, and the data uh, is not wasted in the sense that uh, it's not a kind of a futile exercise in creating, uh, in duplicating data that the center would otherwise post in a different format on its own pages. It is possible to get all the data that the given center inputs into the SIS back via the API. And we provide documentation on that and an and, and example suite. Uh, so, uh, in effect, the center needs to create only one instance of uh, recommendations uh, instead of duplicating the information. Uh, what are our plans? Well, uh, the basic plan is to continue because we've, uh, we've seen that it makes sense and we've, uh, we've heard uh, some nice uh, comments on, on the system. Uh, and we would like eventually or very quickly indeed, uh, to get more Clarin centers on board. Uh, we are in touch uh, with the, uh, well, via the standards committee, uh, we are in touch with the uh, assessment committee and the centers committee. Uh, we would like to relatively quickly, if possible, get text plus centers on board and to somehow uh, deal with brain number deficiency. Because for now, the development team is just consists of two brains. And that's, you know, that's not enough to, to handle uh, requests from centers and so on and so forth. Uh, because this needs to be a collaborative effort. Uh, so we simply need uh, centers to uh, deposit data. And of course, we will help along the way. Uh, as I mentioned, documentation exists. exists. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you for your attention. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And we have plenty of time for the questions. Um, I address the audience both here and, and online. Um, anyone who would like to be first? Yes, please. Yeah, thanks for this um, interesting presentation. Um, I noticed that there were popular formats uh, called HTML and XML. And I wonder um, how does the sys um, deal with the fact that XML in itself does not say very much. So can you um, specify further or how does it Yeah, we, Thanks, thanks Marty. Uh, we basically implement the uh, committee uh, recommendations on not, uh, on trying not to talk about HTML and XML uh, too much and also not uh, 
mentioned the TI as the format, so uh, because it's just too wide, too broad. That's why you're asking, right? But uh, nevertheless, uh, well, f for now, as I mentioned, the response rate is uh, very slow, and sometimes uh, uh, we have simply transferred information from what the centers have provided and are still providing on their pages, vague as it is. So sometimes centers simply mention XML and HTML, uh, and we didn't dare to, you know, to interpret this information further in some cases. So it's what you see in this slide simply reflects the state of uh, our interpretation of, of or the work that we have done on transferring uh, information from center pages into the SIS. It is uh, imperfect and as I said, there is a clear warning when you look up a center that this information should be curated by the given center. 